Welcome back to The Foundation Presents. My name is Mike Schramm and I am your host and a board member on the Foundation for West Hartford Public Schools, a private nonprofit group dedicated to expanding upon the classroom experience that the students have in the West Hartford Public School System. Today I'll be chatting with three teachers who have carried out a couple of grants in the West Hartford Public Schools as well as one of our donors who gave the grant uh, that one of our teachers will be talking about. And now I'd like to welcome on Melissa Tom, teacher librarian at Bristow, to talk about her grant, Little Bits in the Makerspace. Now Melissa, can you tell me what Little Bits are? Little Bits are snappable circuits that allow somebody with zero understanding of electricity or electronics to start kind of building a foundation for understanding. And they have a lot of different applications. So are they like electrified Legos, sort of? They are, except you cannot get a shock and you cannot start anything on fire. That sounds good for a middle school. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So how does this build on what the kids are doing right now at Bristow? It, at Bristow and in West Hartford, in the middle schools, we are trying to build a culture of a makerspace mindset. And makerspace is something that is all over the world. Some people might be familiar with the World's Maker Fair that happens in New York City. It just happened a couple weekends ago. And the maker movement is a result of a variety of things, but it's kind of a, an answer to the issue of we're getting a lot fewer people that have skills in the trades. There's a lot of people that just want to work with their hands. And the maker space is a very wide, it goes from engineering to manufacturing to business, and then it's worked its way into the public libraries and to education. So how does it exist at Bristow? At Bristow we have an active maker space in our library, mm -hmm. and I collaborate with as many teachers as I am able to in all subjects, not only science and math. Um, but the students are able to come down into my space, and essentially we just have a variety of materials out. The little bits play a role in some different components. I've incorporated them into our science club that meets on Thursdays after school with the eighth grade science teacher. So they get to kind of tinker and play and develop projects, whether they follow directions or come up with something all on their own. Um, there's also a space in my library that I just keep a couple of the kits out so that kids, when they come in on a pass, they can, again, tinker and play with really no end in mind. They can kind of go based on whatever they're interested in. And one example, just recently, we have cardboard in our um, makerspace for the month of October because it's Global Cardboard Challenge. And I have a student who is really, really good with the little bits, and he created a doorbell for one of the houses that some of the students built, and he literally made it in probably two minutes. Wow. Yeah, so it's just, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. That sounds extremely impressive mm -hmm. and challenging. I don't think that I could make a doorbell <laughs> in two minutes. Now, uh, is this space set aside for specific students, or is it open to anyone at Bristow? It's open to anyone, including teachers. I, yesterday, oh. I actually had the teachers come in for a workshop for our PD day, and they all got to do a design challenge and make something with the materials that I put out. Um, it is open, like I said, to all students. We have a Maker Monday Club that students can stay after school for an hour on Mondays and create things. Teachers can sign up for the Makerspace and bring their class down. I'm really working on connecting what I have available, such as Little Bits, into the curriculum as it exists already so that they can add to what they're already doing. Um, that's one of my goals this year as the other middle school teachers are also trying to implement that. And just bringing that maker mindset to all the subjects where it's not just sitting and passively getting information, but being involved in what they're learning and getting active in what they're doing. You know, you hear so much about students um, being forced into the classroom. There's less time for them to get outside and uh, just expel some of this energy right. that they build up. And this seems like a really great way for them to tap into that more creative side of their brain and develop that a bit more. How many students are using the maker space and using the little bits? I would say it varies from day to day, but uh, the afternoon is the time that students come down on a pass. We have something called learning labs, which is somewhat like a study hall. Um, so when students are in this class, they come down. Every period, I have at least 10 to 15 students. I actually have to turn some away just because of the space and the amount of people in that space at one time, which is a good mm -hmm. problem. Um, but I would say that the little bits are used relatively regularly, both in the makerspace and teachers have started to check some out. 
so they're starting to find direct connections to what they're doing. Um, as the year has gone on, it's the word has spread and it's become very, very popular and the place to be. So it's, they're very upset when I have to close the makerspace because I'm teaching a class in the lab or I have another group in there that I'm doing something else with. So You've got the most popular club in town. I do, <laughs> I do. And how does that tie into what the students are learning in the classroom? As you may know, and probably a lot of people um, in the community, STEM has been a really big push. Um, of course. In the last, I don't, since I've been in education, it's been a buzzword. And now we've moved a little bit into STEAM, so we add mm. the A, which is arts, and that is really addressed in, the makerspace addresses all of the components of STEAM. Um, it's a really big push with the technology that we have and the speed in which it's advancing. Um, students are learning how to code starting in kindergarten, first grade. Coding is a part of our makerspace. So wow. even if it's not already part of the curriculum in the classes that they have, which it is in some of them, and I'm very happy to see that, but I can complement that and I can fill in gaps in my space with what the teachers don't have time in their physical schedules to do. Yeah, I'm sure that your space is a way for the students to take what they're learning in the classroom and then diversify that to their own interests. How does coding come into play? What are they doing? Um, a variety of things with that too. Uh, Little Bits actually just released a coding kit this last June, which I sent it home with a student who, as a sixth grader, showed an affinity for Little Bits and had used them at home prior to me getting them in my library. And now she's an eighth grader, and she took them home because in December, that is the theme for my makerspace. So she is going to tell me what we're going to be doing with coding in Little Bits when she brings the kit back in a couple weeks. Oh. Um, but in other areas, we have code.org, which is an amazing free website. Um, mm. Day of Code happens in December. So nationally, people are getting an introduction to coding if they haven't already had one. Um, Scratch is another program online, again free, that kids can build their own video games or avatars and it's drop and drag coding. Um, students who are a little bit more advanced, I have books in my makerspace that are how-to books, so how to do HTML, how to learn Python, how to learn JavaScript. So there's a variety of places where they can kind of take it where they want it. And they're working on in the schools to add it to the curriculum in the new science standards that are being developed. You know, that doesn't surprise me, and I'm, I'm sitting here thinking that um, this program that you've got, it, it seems like it has a lot of, of applications to many different uh, classroom environments, learning styles, because it allows the students to get a little more individualized, which we know is so hard as there are more and more kids in the schools, right. and the infrastructure of the school can only accommodate so many classrooms and so many kids in the classroom. Yes. It sounds like this is a great pressure release for that. It is, it is. If there was one thing that you could tell our audience about your interactions with the foundation for the West Harper Public Schools, what would it be? I would say, well, without the foundation, we would not have little bits because due to budget and other restraints, that's just not something that's feasible. So I am very appreciative. Um, and I have so many teachers I work with that have written other foundation grants that I have been able to help implement, whatever those are. It just gives us such a wider range of materials, activities, and resources that we wouldn't otherwise have accessibility to. So it's something that I came from another school district and this was not an option or it's just, I was very, very happy to find out that this was something that West Hartford did and supported. So I will be using them again this year. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad that the foundation could support the work that you're doing and I'm glad that you could come on the show today. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. And now I'd like to welcome on Jim Carroll of J.P. Carroll Roofing, who was the donor for the last grant that we heard about. So, Jim, tell me your thoughts, first and foremost, on the little bits in the Makerspace grant. Well, we got involved uh, a number of years ago um, as a result of my wife is actively involved in the West Harvard school system. And uh, we had four boys that went through the, the school system as well. So. Um, she's my conduit to the outside world, outside of uh, you know our business, <laughs> and uh, so she made me aware of the, this uh, opportunity for a grant to support this worthy cause, and it was it kind of touched a part of my heart because when I went to school 
700 years ago in elementary school, there was no such thing. It was three R's and, and it was, you know, there's a very strict curriculum and there wasn't a lot of, of free thinking or free play in terms of um, this type of um, adjunct stuff that comes along with, you know, the, the core subject. So mm -hmm. um, I love the concept. Um, I saw it in business and at upper levels, Amazon, Facebook, where there's a lot of free thinking, a lot of a lot of freedom in terms of you know uh, you know creative minds coming together and, and and coming up with new concepts. So so we got involved and um, and I think the first year was in was engineering, and they were the kids were using uh, building blocks with which to create structure, and um, so kind of an interesting story. They the we were invited to come to one of the one of the classroom settings. All the kids were around. And there was all these building blocks. And different kids were doing different things with them, very different things. And one little boy was sitting off to the side of the room all by himself. And a little uh, Oriental boy didn't know, and I, the teacher told me, didn't know a word of English, not a word. And I think he was, um, um, I think he had been adopted by a West Harper family, I'm not really sure. So he was sitting over there and he was, he was working on a, um, he was trying to make a, a, a conical shape, a self-supporting conical shape, and he had the base, so he had these blocks, and I think he had a picture. Now, mind you, I couldn't, I couldn't communicate with him at all, mm -hmm. but he had the base of, this, of the first layer of a conical shape, but he couldn't quite understand what the sequential arrangement of each layer was to be able to form a perfect cone, which is a self-supporting structure. So I gently showed him that if you subtract a, if you, all your pieces are the same and you subtract one piece from each layer, you will build a perfect cone. Mm -hmm. So I put the, the pieces in a circle and I left out just one. And he looked up at me with a smile and I knew that he got it. So I backed away, he continues to make the shape and he formed a perfect conical cone. It was remarkable. That, no words, no English, no, n nothing other than just the example of. And I let his mind take it to fruition, which was remar remarkable. You know, that, that is a great story. And one of the things that we try to do here at the foundation is get more people in the classroom to see the work that the students are doing because it's always so amazing, at least from my perspective, to see these young minds solving these problems for the mm -hmm. first time and, and to play a role in that is really important. And obviously, you've been a West Hartford institution for a while. I see G.P. Carroll roofing signs on a lot of lawns. Yeah. What was it that spurred you uh, to take action and give at a higher level to actually have a grant uh, in your name? Well, I wanted to do it because I, I wish that I had that opportunity. Mm. So I wanted to give back to, West Harvard has been very good to us. I mean, they, we are really very blessed to have this, this well-educated community that understands um, in, our, in, our, in our world of roofing, understands good workmanship and, and, and a commitment to the community. So they've been very good. I, so it was my way of giving back to the community. Mm. But, but more to the point, I wanted to give kids an opportunity, what we didn't have. And that was the, the tools. I mean, we, we provide the grant, which buys the, the, the pieces, the parts, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to get, give back to something where they had the opportunity to, uh, to actually to be able to watch kids in, in free thinking form, to be able to develop things that are outside of the, 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 you know, the hard book. And, and, and children have an uh, unbelievable, I mean, the, the, the resources, the untapped resources of their minds, I think is just um, remarkable, remarkable. Well, Jim, I couldn't have said it any better myself. Thank you so much for your support for the foundation and thank you for coming on the show today. My pleasure. And now I'd like to welcome on Jen LaFort and Matt Downey, who are two first grade teachers at Morley Elementary School. 
Matt and Jen, can you guys talk to me a bit about your experiences with the Foundation for West Rockford Public Schools? Um, our, my experience with them um, started last year when my colleague Kim Ashworth wrote a grant for um, uh, basically a loom kit and yarn to make hats that we the kids all made and then we ended up um, selling them for um, as a fundraiser for our work with a Haitian um, school uh, that's our sister school so we actually raised quite a bit of money and they're they're cute too there's a little um, <laughs> and she um, we just had a great experience with them and working with the foundation people they're so lovely mm -hmm. and so that's why I decided this year um, to try one of my own yeah that's, support for that's really interesting and I think that we also talked about the hats on a previous episode of the foundation presents which was really exciting to learn about I think she brought a student in and she did yes. yeah so that was really great. And then, Matt, how did you get involved with the foundation? So this is my first year at Morley, uh, but it, it's a pretty interesting perspective to come in. And the first thing that came up in our first staff meeting was the work that had happened over the summer in Haiti with the, uh, the, the community of Morley and the Haitian community. So it was a real impetus to kind of want to be involved more in the foundation. Uh, I actually didn't have anything to do with the grant we're going to be speaking about. <laughs> I actually just get to reap some of the benefits. Um, but it's just great to be involved and to see sort of firsthand how the uh, grants are put into place and the, the impact that they can have. Well, let's talk about the grant that we're here to talk about. What is the grant and why is it important? So the grant that we have for this year is for all of first grade. We have three classes at Morley. Um, and it's to have um, funds for us to go to the planetarium at the Children's Museum, and we're close so we can walk, which is nice, um, <laughs> and learn about, um, it's called, I think it's called Clockwork Sky. So it's how the um, planets and stars, how everything moves, and you know which way does the sun come up, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then, um, so that's basically a solar system, and then the second part of the grant was to have um, a push-in experience. So experts from the museum will come to us and do engineering. So um, it's I think it's called how things work, and they bring a bunch of objects, and they um, will think of a problem that needs to be solved, um, working with push and pull and motion and all those kind of basic um, engineering ideas. Um, so it's kind of a two-part thing. Both of it is supporting the new NGSS standards, which are the new science standards, so that um, we thought, why not go to the experts? And we have them right in town, and it also feels good to support that museum, which is a great place. So are the kids learning about engineering and these forces in the classroom, or is this more of a... Um, Cluing them into what will come next w in the curriculum. Actually, with the standards, um, they will be. It's part of the standards, so okay. that was part of it. Where we're looking at the standards of things that we're beginning to implement. It's sort of a rollout, and thinking, well, we need to get ahead of this, and and you know, again, going to the experts to help us. Um, so it really is very fundamental learning for them, which is just kind of great that we have the support through the foundation for that. Yeah, well, I'm glad that we can support a grant like this. And it seems like a great out-of-the-classroom learning experience. And I remember from my days in the elementary school and middle and high school that whenever we left the classroom was always exciting. And to be able to walk somewhere for a field trip is really neat, too. Have you actually gone to the museum yet with the kids? Not this year. Last year we did. Okay. Um, we didn't have the push-in experience, so I kind of can't wait to see what that's like. But last year we did walk the kids to the planetarium. Thankfully, it didn't rain. It was going to be <laughs> rain or shine. Um, which, again, it's, you know, a bus is money. Everything is kind of money. And in our budget stuff that's going on, um, we're really conscious of that. So we walked, and it was an amazing um, show. It was just for us. It was very age-appropriate, um, which is hard, given that they're six-year-olds, and sometimes things are a little bit too complicated or way too basic. They really hit it perfectly. Um, and then they said, well, you have another hour or two to just go and s explore the museum. So it was just like a great morning. That, it sounds like a great way for the kids to be able to learn m something that they maybe normally wouldn't get an opportunity yes. to do in the classroom. Did they have some sort of a curriculum for you guys when you got there? Was it planned out or was it more like 
you, students can go and look at whatever they want in the museum and the lessons are kind of incorporated into the exhibits. How does that work? The second part of it, so we had a time, you know, it's like 9.30 show or something, and that part I had talked to, um, I forget his name, but there, there's a liaison there who will just ask you what have they been learning, what do they need to learn, what are the standards, I mean, they're very um, education-minded, and um, so the museum part was just exploration. Um, okay. But the show, I had told them ahead of time things that we were working on specifically, and they had a question and answer. They were, they were great. So, so when are you guys going this year? Um, we're still scheduling. Okay. Yeah, so one's going to be in the fall and one in the spring. Oh, so you'll go twice. Right. Well, when it, the push-in will be in the fall, and then the, because we are going to the planetarium, and then the second part is the, um, the push-in with the engineering. So okay. Two experiences. Oh, I didn't. I didn't realize that it was going to be two. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, a two for one <laughs> grant. It's definitely yes. what we like to hear about. Yes, it really <laughs> and uh, Matt, you're new to Morley. It's your first year teaching there. What are your thoughts on the foundation and this grant specifically in terms of how it's going to work with your kids in the classroom? Well, I think uh, just looking at the grant itself and the the work that the foundation does, especially as the the budget is so tight this grant might provide an experience that otherwise these students wouldn't have had. And every experience that they don't get, you might lose one future engineer down the road or one future scientist. So the, the more exposure that they have to these types of activities, you're really bringing in, one, a shared experience that you can use in the classroom for writing purposes, for reading purposes, and just general discussion. But it also provides a lifelong opportunity for these students. And I'm not saying that everyone's going to become an astrophysicist, <laughs> but there might be that one. And that's really what we hope to provide and just give them a multitude of opportunities. And even afterwards, after the actual grant, if we do have time to explore the Science Center, then there, there's other avenues for students to become interested in. And uh, there's other things that they get to see that they just aren't exposed to on a daily basis or maybe they live in the area but they've never actually visited the Science Center which I'm sure happens quite often uh, so it's just a great all-around balanced experience that I'm just happy to be a part of. You know I think you've both touched on some really interesting and important points about uh, the opportunities that are afforded to students and we're obviously in perilous budget times and who knows what's what the budget picture will be like even when this episode airs but um, I'm happy to hear that students are having the opportunity to learn outside of the classroom because I really do think that those are the moments that the students remember and like you said Matt y this might spark uh, a creative interest in these students that they otherwise wouldn't have and and um, hopefully they'll go back to the museum or they'll be more interested in the classroom and I'm sure Jen I don't, I don't know how it went last year but I bet the students were a little more energized and engaged in the oh, classroom yeah. for a couple days <laughs> afterward and, and it's sort of we tie it into other things so we do the Lucy Calkins um, writers workshop um, program and so you know it all became part of informational writing which is what we were doing at the time so now they just had all these facts that they learned at the at the planetarium, and so there's just so many ways that it 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 the snowball continues for them um, with this this type of experience. Well, this sounds great. So. It, and if there was one thing that you both would like to convey to our audience about the foundation, what would it be? I would say thank you. <laughs> I really would. I just. Um, and the other thing is that I think there's a part of the grant when you're writing it where it's it it's something like you know what will this um, grant do that you couldn't have done um, sort of on your own you know what I mean so um, this you know I don't have a planetarium in my classroom and I definitely don't have the engineering skills to sort of have this huge project which will be in the auditorium and and so it's it's really making things real world and I feel like it's helping us access the wealth of expertise we have in our own community. So. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. That was uh, very well said. Um, but it just seems that the foundation provides just that missing puzzle piece mm -hmm. that without this grant, we might not have had this field trip. We missed the experience and it's, it's all tied in and it's, it comes from the foundation. Well, Jen and Matt, thanks so much for your time and for the work that you're doing with the kids in the schools. Yeah, thank you thank so you. much.
Well, folks, that's all the time that we have today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you would like to learn more about any of these grants, or if you would like to make a gift to help the Foundation for West Hartford Public Schools, please visit fwphs.org.